See if I catch myself. Yeah, it does look low. Maybe here? How does that look? Can you sit? Dante, a little test run, bud. Can you sit? Good boy. Can you do a place? Let's see what we did. Place. Okay, so the idea is with place, now this can be like a mat, this can be a bed, this can be loads and loads of things. Okay, okay bud. See what you want to do. See what you're thinking about doing. I want to make sure you're not overfed on that before we start. Now I'm doing a lot of multiple things right now. This would be like at home, I have time to do like a little training scenario, right? So with him specifically, with this Newfoundland Dante, handsome man, and a lot of the dogs, I'd say just about 90, 5% of my dogs, it gives us the opportunity to practice a lot of things at the same time. That's what I'm trying to do. So for one, I'm trying to keep this idea of this treat palm hand thing alive, right? This idea magically that my hand creates treats, right? I want to make sure he's conditioned, that he sees this, and especially at this phase of training with Dante, a couple weeks uh, of a board and train, and then like a few weeks at home of practice doing follow-ups now. One of the things I really do want to make sure, especially with a dog this big, or it could be your dog's specific issues, that they understand that we have treats that we can reward them, but we need to attach it to firm things that helps. With Dante, we're kind of moving towards therapy work, being like a nurturing kind of foster for other dogs coming in. That's what we're gearing him up and working him towards. So kind of with the therapy aspect, or having people over with a young Newfoundland, things like place commands, nothing, place, place, are gonna be real important. Now, one thing with him is this is an uneasy surface, so we are kind of working on that. One is just like getting him used to uneasy surfaces in general. But two, giving him an idea that if he's told place that he's gonna be on there for an extended period of time. So we have hard stays, right, dogs, that we reinforce that with. We shoot that out, we use that same hand gesture, if you will, right? Hiding the treat or gesturing that we're hiding the treat with two fingers. Then we have those other three fingers out and I'm going to throw that command at him, stay. Um, other dogs that we trained, especially remote trained dogs, are usually going to have a perceived stay. So this dog is going to think that if I'm given a position, if I get up, that is what causes a correction of some form depending on how I've been trained, right? So with Dante, we absolutely use those commands. We'll start to throw some distractions in it. You can see where this could go at home and it all would depend on like where I place this object. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do is check-ins. So I wanna check in with him. I'm gonna check in, I'm gonna give him a reward. I'm gonna go back to like a point of distraction or maybe go up a step, change that angle, see if that's what causes him to go through. Now here, it's a bit more of a distraction because he knows that there's dudes going, we got dogs going by, we got friends going by, we got loads of stuff happening outside of here. So for him, it's causing, it could be the front door. We might have to start with the back one with the dog, right? But the idea is I'm going to keep throwing distractions out and keep this idea alive. Water bowl, not sure if that's in frame. And just keep doing little things. And I want to find where these failure points are. Did we see that soft gesture, right? If I want to minimize what I'm doing over time, I can also start to kind of throw him a lesser form of what we've done before, right? So like we'll start, a lot of people will start with total cues with the body, right? This dog hasn't been trained that way. He doesn't need me to have them squared up on him to understand he has to stay in place and he can't go out the door. But a lot of us will start in these like real specific manners. So we want to start to devolve that. You even saw me in the beginning with a firm stay, right? And so as I'm moving around, especially with that dog going by, I don't know if you could hear it uh, on camera. That was really good. I want to check in and give you a reward for that. Yeah, stay. Every time, just in the beginning here, as I'm starting to build this, we're doing it on a different surface, in a different place, in a different area, with different distractions. I'm going to check in more, but I'm trying to be mindful of how much I'm doing that, right? I'm trying to be mindful of how much I'm helping him out. I'm going to try to do less and less, gesture less and less, pick the word, pick the hand command. I want to do it differently so he comes down to this idea that it ultimately means I need to stay in position and we want to create the most minimal form of that over time or at least that be our goal, right? So now we have these check-ins getting out longer. He was going to down. That was a perceived correction. You can do that. You can down, buddy. I messed that up. I want to reinforce that. So with Dante, especially a large dog, and this is where it might be a little different or let's say a spicy dog, right? Maybe a little bitey fella or gal, 
I'm going to reward them if they put themselves in a more passive position. Hell, I'm going to do that all over the place for loads of different reasons with loads of different things. But especially when a dog is this big and we want to bring him everywhere and anywhere, I need to go out of my way to reinforce that if you're going to get more passive, if you're going to get more control, dude, that's rewardable. I will get myself up, I will go over there and I will reward you for it, right? I swear he like knows certain people's footsteps over other people's footsteps, right? He will like match pets to foot sounds. <laughs> you so smart, yes, right? Let's go back and talk a little bit more about what we're doing, right? We have that yes as a validating response. We've used that yes since you was pup, well, maybe not since you were a puppy, since you were a little smaller, yeah, yeah. But the idea here is, is time, especially once we're getting to this phase, right? I want to throw distractions out. That's going to be one big impulse. So if I'm using a ton and ton and ton of distraction, like I'm up in the lobby and we're letting dogs go by, I'm not going to do that for as long as say I'm going to do this, right? This is when I'm, again, in this, this one of the big points, especially with Dante for this exercise, is to reinforce reward. That's something that uh, specifically with this dog, we haven't covered as much as I'd like. And I wanted to kind of go out to uh, like, one, it's made it a lot easier to handle him. He's been way more calm, especially if we, uh, I don't know if you can see, we kind of, I need to fill out the rest of what we did. But just in an hour's worth of time, I was documenting different things that we were doing, right? So we had a fast-paced walk, right, for 15 minutes. We, had, uh, we went to Doyle's Pub for 15 minutes, met with people. That was kind of like more controlled commands, keeping him in that down, right? Um, and then a uh, 10-minute rest. After that, we did obedience. For 10 minutes, I need to fill in another fast-paced walk, and then we're doing this, right? Um, if I've noticed that the thing that matters the most, especially when it comes to, say, interacting, before we have a big distraction, which might be like interacting with another dog, that's something that we're still building with him. He's coming in a lot less excited if he knows that I have a reward for him, if he knows that I'm there to give him something after I've taken it away, it's made him more receptive. It's made it turn a little bit more into obedience where he's sitting down more calm. One of the weird things that I noticed today and we're kind of getting down, I think, to the nitty gritty of it with him is once he was calm and passive, two of my dogs that typically are very, very receptive were very defensive that Dante was calm. I'm not sure if it's a perceived size, um, but we're going to keep working through. He did absolutely amazing today. I would say that he was calm. He was absolutely warm, especially compared to the last couple times. He needed a few corrections for being a little rowdy, but past that, um, he was super relaxed, especially, uh, and we'll go into more detail, but I wanted to make, definitely wanted to cover one of the biggest things. Just hear the dog going by without saying an S-T-A-Y, right? I'm just trying to test the state. Right now, there I'm going to step in. He still hasn't messed up, but what happens? If I allow him into the down, or say if we start with the down, which is smarter, it's gonna be a more controlled position. In this context, I really wanna see, like, again, two things. You'll get rewarded if you make the right decision, right? Especially if we're timing it with dogs going by. I'm not sure what you guys can hear. I wish I could cut to a different, oh, that's real good. We just had one go by, stay. That's tricky. Oh, very nice. Very nice. Good boy. Stay. Good job, Dante. Stay. Nope. You hear your treats fall? I dropped a treat. I dropped a little bit of treat. He'll break for that. No, sorry. Stay. You ain't smelling no foods. Stay. Very nice. I like that. That's tough. Come on, bud. Okay. Nice, big Blake come in. Yes, sir. Look at that draw. Look at that draw. I love this. Hey, no, no, no. Are you too excited? Yes, yes, yes. This idea, and then oh, let's talk about this real quick. I got a little bit of time. I can, I can wrap this up. One thing I'd like to talk about. That little bit of excitement, right? That um, high pitch trill. That's something. Come here, Mama. Yeah, you can see that. Immediately get excited. We've been using that for the recall. I want to make a separate video for that. Um, I paired just like an excited sound 100% with food, but I've noticed when we're close and I do that. So that was like, I don't want to say my mistake. 
because I feel like you should be able to talk to him however you want to talk to him. Like we can condition any dog for that. What I'm getting at is when I do that recall kind of trail, come on, puppy, right? If I'm doing that close, he's like, I'm here. I think, I think kind of what's happening is he's like, I'm here, like I hear you. And he will like come up. He hasn't done that on greet. He hasn't really done that with me um, much on leash, even with people getting super excited. So what I'm kind of getting at is, if I say put the leash on him and I can throw out that trill, knowing that he's gonna get excited and try to jump up, especially if it's like right now I have treats on me, I'm gonna do it just before we leave and walk out the door, just to see if I get a jump. I'm gonna like literally throw that sound out there just to see if I get a jump out of him. I'm gonna correct him down if he does it, like in a downward position, and then try to coax him into the sit um, and then reward him for it if he does it. Was that tough work laying there? We needed to water up. I don't know if you can see the bowl. Need a lot of water after that. That was hard work, right? Daddy! Daddy! No. He can't. He made it. Oh, a little excitement at the door. Not horrible. And I love that. You put yourself in a better position. Well, let's get this camera, buddy. Oh, look at that pressure. We're learning that pressure so well. Good job. So, here at the door. It's the same thing I'm getting at. With Dante, if we lead him with a correction or we give him a command before, he's gonna do it, he's gonna sit there, but it's not going to replicate what's gonna happen if we do throw the door open and say that just on the off chance we don't know where we're at with him, there is a dog there. So instead of prefacing him and him needing to hear a bunch of things from me in a situation, I wanna really reinforce that his actions have consequences, good and bad, and it's not all me. If I get a single look back, if I get a behavior that's anything better than trying to go out the door, it's rewardable. I'm just reminding him of this and giving him the confines of the rules and the rewards before we leave. I'm just doing a little shortcut version of that. This is one of the things I'm trying to get at. If we warm him up in this way, he's like a million percent more receptive. He's checking what we need way more. And it's even making him check the leash pressure a lot more. I noticed he came in with the choke chain. I don't know if it's like maybe because of a little bit of a fur issue, but I don't think we even need to talk about a fur saver, side note with Dante specifically. But I think I've whittled him down pressure wise to where we can start to use that fur saver, which doesn't work um, quite as well as the choke chain. A little bit of bait, it's just a dog going by, doing a little spin and then another presentation. Again, I, I don't care if he'll sit if we say sit. Like, I don't care, sit. If I do this, and I really gesture that I want him to stay, I've removed so much of a kind of possibility of him doing anything. In this aspect of training, and genuinely trying to keep him honest and see what he wants to do, I'm just throwing him that option as much as possible in a less controlled way. So that when we are out and we do tell him sit, and we do tell him stay, and we are taking those kind of extra precautions, that, that like it's 0% possibility that we're gonna have any incidents, even if that other dog has bad intentions, right? That's the idea here. We're kind of keeping him standing, typically. We're just throwing things open. We're not prefacing him with words a lot. We're trying to see what do you think of doing, and then we are dropping these corrections and these rewards where they need to be. All right, I think that's good. <laughs> Cute. 